If you are just joining us right now, you are definitely at the right place. My name is Abigail Isaac, and this is Holy Ghost Christian Center Union, New Jersey. And it is the first Sunday in the month of April, and we're just experiencing God in a very, very special way. Today, wherever you are, whatever situation you might find yourself, just know that God is with you. However, right here in the studio, we have a very, very special guest in the house. He's a quintessential teacher. He's a... He's someone with so much knowledge when it comes to relationship, family, and how to, you know, self-improve. Please join me as I welcome Praise for Wu Wear. Thank you very much, Abigail. So good to see you again. So good to see you. How are you doing this I'm morning? I'm good. Very excellent. Wow. We just concluded first service, and um, I must say that experience for me was like, it was like I was being healed. It was like, this was a deliverance session. People mm. sometimes think that deliverance <laughs> will have to come with, you know, laying of hands, but the Bible says that my people suffer for lack of understanding, lack mm. of knowledge. Mm. So when you get knowledge and you get um, um, information that just enlightens you, just like, your darkness is being removed. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and I agree with you. Wow. Okay, so um, we just finished um, Ignite Relationship Conference. It was Friday and Saturday. If you're not there, you missed. But I wanted to ask, what was your experience like? I know this is the second time you're joining mm -hmm. us for Ignite. You know, comparing last year to this year, what was your experience? I think um, I had a great time um, at Ignite um, this year. The theme was very... Um, instructive as well. I met new people, and um, I, I think that it was very good. Um, it seems to be an improvement from last year. Um, it can get better, mm -hmm. and that, that was what I was saying, that we have to make it an American affair so that people from other states can actually join. Yeah. Because a lot was shared that I wish we had more people to hear this who don't necessarily live in New York or New Jersey. Um, so it, it was it was pretty much good. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And today's service, I wanted us to, before we even touch on what you talked about today, I think a lot of people would like to connect with you, mm -hmm. you know, because um, there's so much that you have to give. Mm -hmm. I and I want people to be able to benefit from that. So yeah. tell us more about what you do, your ministry, how people can contact you. And well, I work as a family life um, strategist, so whatever problem you're having in your family, I help people attain wellness um, through strategy. And so um, I function on all social media, on Instagram, I am Praise for Owe. Um, on Facebook, Praise for Owe. On LinkedIn, Praise for Owe. And um, YouTube, Praise for Owe Live. And um, my YouTube page is actually a huge, re it's almost like a school, wow. you know. Um, yeah, and um, I've got a website, Praise for Owe tech i mean praise with a uh, with a d at the hand and tech.com okay. um there are lots of courses in there um i mean there's a whole lot we can do for for humanity and wherever i see family crisis parenting crisis i just want to show up there and let them know that hey you are one help away from getting these things resolved wow um it seems because God, I believe God always takes us through different things in life because he's preparing us for where he wants to take us to. And that is why as parents also, we should also focus on how we raise our two children and the intentionality in it. Um, I had one question from uh, today's event. I think that it will benefit some parents too. You talked about the six levels, you know, when yeah. your child is from zero to three, mm -hmm. from four to five and all that, how you are uh, scouting, observing. Yeah. Okay, so what if as a, as a parent, you missed some of those things, yeah. you know, and maybe your child has, you know, gone wild and you're just finding it difficult, you don't know how to reconnect with them and just bring them back. Is there a way that that can be, you know, uh, Absolutely, that there's a way, there's a framework. Um, if you're de dealing with an erring child, there's a way um, to bring them back. And I always tell the parents that the first thing you want to do is to calm down. Agitation never solves any problem. It aggravates it. So when you calm down, the next thing you want to do is to observe, right? And then when you observe, um, you know, in observation, you want to understand that your child is not a de demon. He's not a devil. It's not everything that he's doing it that is bad, right? And so you are going to observe what the child is doing, but you're going to observe the pattern, and you're going to observe why he's doing what he's doing. Sometimes the child is rebelling against something. Sometimes it's influence. Other times, you know, then part of the observation is how does he do what he does? So if you say he smokes, what happens before he smokes? If you figure that out, what happens before? So if you do that flow chart, you can actually figure out what is wrong. Right, and then number three is you want to 
enlist the service of a professional because you're not a professional and so you will need someone to help you analyze things and to to help you out on what you need to do and to also monitor you. Mm -hmm. And then number four is you want to commit to progress. Progress is to mean that as you start the intervention, your child is going to show you a lot of progress or well, maybe even minor progress. You need to get to the point where you can spot it and you can praise it. Because many of us are waiting for the final outcome before we praise the child. And that's why we sabotage the process. Mm -hmm. But the slightest change, slightest improvement also deserves um, your celebration and what have you. Now, when you do all these things, you need to understand that Every misbehavior in the child is actually traceable to two things, a non-discovery of self and a non-remembrance of self. Mm. That is usually an identity crisis issue. Mm. If your child does not know who he is, he's going to mess up. If he forgets who he is, he's going to mess up. When you understand this, you will know that every misbehavior is an opportunity for you to remind your child okay. of who he is. Because the society is designed to make your child question his identity, to make him or then move away from, you know, the real agenda of Christ to the agenda of the world. And because that looks spicy, that looks more interesting, that looks more creative, you know, with all the rest of the and what have you, you know. Mm -hmm. So that would actually um, attract a child faster. And so your response has got to be love. If love is your response, mm -hmm. then you will know that love believes all things, love hopes all things, love endures all things, and love never ends. Mm -hmm. Love will sometimes look like, oh, you know, it's compromised, but no, that's not what it is. Love is love. And if you love your child enough, there is no hardened person that love cannot break. Mm. Yeah. Now, talking about love, responding with love, it might be difficult for, for some parents yeah. to, you know, relate with that. And, you know, they say, spare the child and spoil the rod. How yeah. did they say that? Uh, well, so, spoil the rod, spare the rod and spoil, spoil the, the child. child. So, what, uh, you know, by most African parents, you know, from my point of view, most African parents, they don't want to, they feel like they, they're going to spoil the child. Yeah. If they don't correct it, they don't beat mm -hmm. it, they don't shout. What is the thin line between spoiling the child and <laughs> responding, you know, in love? You know, when African parents tell me that you're going to spoil the child, I'm saying, who have you become by them beating you? <laughs> who have you become, really? From the scheme of things, you know, from influencing the world, from determining what happens on this planet, who have you become? Right? Mm. And so we don't know the difference between discipline, domestication, and punishment. Mm. Right? Discipline within the framework of discipline is the Latin word disciplina. It means to raise, it means to grow, it means to groom, to correct, and to help. Right? So how do you help me when all you have done is to beat me and I'm hurting and I'm unhappy? How can you help me? Right? But there's another word domestication. Domestication is actually the Latin word domesticatus, which means to tame and to clip wings. Then there's the third word, punishment, which is the Latin word, penere, which means to inflict pain. Mm. So I always ask, do you want to discipline, do you want to punish, or do you want to domesticate? Because discipline is like what we do in church, discipleship. Okay. When you're discipling a young believer, do you beat them? Do you slap them when they don't get it right? No. We don't do that. So why do we think we have to beat? And we pick the scriptures that says that, you know, um, bound in the heart of a child, the rod of correction. But the Bible did not say the rod is a belt or the rod is a cane. That's there not, was no specification. It, it, was not, it could be communication, mm. right? Because for those who advocate for that, the Bible also says that if you have a rebellious child who never changes, it says bring him to the outside of the court and let them stone him to death. Why are you not quoting that, mm. right? Mm. And so you realize that we lack the capacity to effectively communicate and we don't know how to correct in fact, not many parents know that withdrawing the benefits of playing a certain game is more painful to a child than beating. Than beating them. Right? And because that makes him remember that, you know what, there is always consequence for every, every action. action. So for the next one week, you're not going to see this thing, you know. So maybe he's going to rely on his friends to tell him what happened, and that's very painful. So he never repeats that behavior. Because Kenin should be, maybe first 50, Kenin should be like maybe number 49. Mm. There are several other things you can do. But because we were beaten, we think we need to beat Be other people. Yeah. But you see, beating does not correct a behavioral problem. The same way you cannot pray yourself out of what you behaved yourself into is the same way you cannot beat a child oh, out of it. Be if beating could solve a problem, nobody would be in jail. Mm. Because when they are caught, they beat them, do all sorts, they put them in, in jail, they leave them, they go and commit the same crime. It's a behavioral issue. So if you don't study the behavior, if you don't know the triggers of the behavior, if you don't know the root cause of the behavior, you can't solve any problem. You're mm -hmm. just going to be window dressing. And that's what many of us do. 
wow, that's, that's very exposing. Talking about behavior, we as Christians, right? You, we, 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 talk, we touched a little bit about how we should be behaving as Christians and how we should be the light. I like the way you put it. You said that you cannot reach the world on your terms. We have to reach the world on yeah. their terms. And because the challenge for Christians is that they, they feel like they have to be a certain way or form a certain kind of look yeah. on one side. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, uh, they don't want to show that. They don't want to look too spiritual. They don't want to look too, oh, yeah, too serious. Oh, calm down, you know. But what would you say to us as Christians, you know, in our life, especially, I want to emphasize on social media. Mm -hmm. How can you project that you're a child of God? You, you know, we, we, don't, um, we don't even understand God, and we don't understand what it means to be a child of God. We think that being a child of God is going around and screaming, Christ, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. That's not what it is. Right? That's not what it is. They asked Paul, when they noticed that the prison opened, what shall I do to be saved? Right? Because they saw something that defies logic, that defies their understanding of what is the norm. And so, I always say to people, we, we always say that we're supernatural. But you see, supernatural means that the extra that, that comes after natural. But you have to be that natural. So what we're doing is we want to be supernatural when we have not even maximized natural, natural because we don't even know how to engage the natural. So we are not excellent at what we do. We want to be supernatural so that we can use supernatural to cover okay. up our mediocrity. Mm. And so I always say to people, if I'm a singer, right, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to go, go into the genre called gospel music because that's a slap. Right? I want to be mainstream. I'm going to sing about love. I'm going to sing about, you know, competence. I'm going to sing about stuff, other stuff, right? And I'm going to show them that I can beat them to their game. Don't go and create some special category for me and say, gospel, of course, Jay-Z is not going to compete in that. All these other people are not going to compete. I want to compete where they are competing because in Egypt, the magicians versus Moses, both of them had rods. Moses dropped his rod. They dropped their rod. Their rods became serpents. His own rod was, he, he swallowed them. That's competence for competence, but superior competence. Mm -hmm. It's superior service delivery. And I think that we promote a lot of mediocrity. So you see some of our movies. Some of our movies, we can watch their movie. They can watch our movies. Why? Excellence has no language. Excellence has no religion. Yes. Excellence is excellent. Many of our work is shoddy. It's mediocre in nature. So we now want our Christian audience to watch it. And that was why, if you remember, when Kirk Franklin re re released Tom, Tom made it to clubs. Mm. Because he was so good that they were wondering, what kind of guy is this? Mm -hmm. And so, I always said our godliness should make us very excellent, that they want to look at our music and our sound and our production, and they're asking questions and say, what are you guys doing? Because that's the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. And so... When I started out, I didn't start out as, I, I didn't want to be a Christian counselor. I, I didn't want to be a Christian coach. I want to be a coach who is a Christian, mm. right? And so I knew the therapy. I knew the intervention. I knew how to beat them in their game. And so when they saw my result, they just realized, that, oh, you know, we need to engage this guy, right? And so, and I'm not calling devil. Uh, you're not going to change me from being a Christian, you know? So we need to understand that. Until we maximize the natural, mm -hmm. we can't even be talking about this. And that is why we make a lot of noise, but we can't engage out mm. there, right? Yeah. So when they're talking about the best musician, the best voice of the year, who should they be calling if not us? Yes. When they're talking about the best cinematography, is it not our movies they should be talking about? Yes. So we do not know how to communicate scriptural principles in a secular manner. And if you look at Jesus, Jesus wasn't religious. Jesus was spiritual. That's why he used stories. And that's why the religious people couldn't, rec mm -hmm. couldn't rec reckon with him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't understand him, so they had to say that he was using the power of the devil because it didn't look like them. It didn't fit into their shape. The guy was sitting with tax collectors. The guy was at the bar with them, you know, and so they were saying if this guy is truly the son of God he cannot be mixing up with these people mm -hmm. and you know what Jesus was doing he was showing that I am light light cannot be contaminated by darkness mm -hmm. right but we we are light but we are afraid of darkness so we say ah run the will darkness is going to get darkness is going to influence you they can if darkness can influence me then I wasn't light because if the room is dark right now and I soon turn on the switch you can't see any shade or shadow or anything yes but if I step into where we say the world is then they influenced me. No, they didn't influence me. They only revealed me. 
Wow, yeah. wow, wow. I mean, I, I believe we can go on and on if we had time. But unfortunately, we don't because we have to quickly join the second service. But it is always a pleasure to have you here. So thank you so much. And you have um, been informed how you can connect with him. You can go to his website. You can follow him on all his social platforms. And um, like I said before, this is Holy Ghost Christian Center. We value you. We love you. I hope that you do enjoy the service. Once again, my name is Abigail Isaac. God bless you. The Lord, it never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. Hallelujah. Don't stand there and look at me. Say something to Jesus. Just lift up your voice and just, I don't have to tell you how to appreciate the one who has kept you. I don't have to put the words in your mouth. If God has been good and faithful to you, you will worship him. Every one of us is aware of what happened on Friday. That shaking that we all experienced. Trust me, if it was more than this, you won't be thanking God the way you are thanking God now. So just thank him that he has kept you alive. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. For in Jesus' name we have worshipped. This morning we are going to declare the word of God over our lives. It's our manifesto. The word of God is spirit and it is life. Media, if you can help us just display that. We're going to just, just going to read this together. And please don't just read this as letters. They are words that carry power. There are words that can cause a change in your life. If the media can help us display the manifesto and we take this together. Thank you. And we're going to say it together. One, two, three, go. In the name of Jesus, my life is full of praise to God for all his goodness. As a child of God, I have a new identity with authority over the devil and his agents. By the blood of Jesus, I live my life in victory over sin, sickness, and death. Only God's will, will and agenda shall unfold in my life, family, and everyone connected to me. My life will reflect God's beauty and glory everywhere I go, attracting pleasant surprises. My hands are blessed and empowered for great exploits to advance God's kingdom. I thrive and blossom as a member of the body of Christ through my local assembly. My life and everything I have honor God, my time, talents, and treasures. I live in love, peace, and unity with others, serving faithfully under my leaders. I am visionary, audacious, loving, understanding, approachable, balanced. I will lead with excellence. Let's say that line again. I am visionary, audacious, loving, understanding, approachable, balanced. I will lead with excellence. Every day I am doing great exploits to the glory of God in Jesus. And let's declare that last line one more time. Every day I am doing great exploits to the glory of God in Jesus name. That will be our testimony for the remainder of the year. In Jesus name we have prayed. Put your hands together for Jesus. In that same spirit let's begin to worship the Lord this morning. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our heart. It's the first Sunday in the month of April, and if you are happy to be in the presence of the Lord, you're going to worship Him. Worship Him from the depth of your heart. He's worthy. He deserves all our worship. He deserves all our praise. Lord, we worship Him. You deserve the glory. And Worship. 
And as we praise your holy name, Lord, you deserve the glory. And the honor. As we lift the voice in worship, and as we praise.
Thank you. Say something to him this morning. Repo Shadi. Begin to speak to God. Thank you for his faithfulness. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we give you praise. We adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you. Repo Shadi. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's the first Sunday of the month of April. God has been faithful to you. He kept you alive. Thank you, Jesus. Why not give Jesus a wave offering this morning? Just wave your hand to him. Do it very well for Jesus. Give him a wave offering to tonight. Lord, I exalt you. Thank you, Father. This month of April will favor you. Everywhere you go, you will return. Thank you, Father. Every blessing for this month is released unto you. You will enter to your opportunity. You will enter to your prepared blessings. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Give us all the clap over this morning. Shall we sit there? Can we appreciate the music team for wonderful work? Can we appreciate them? Wonderful. We want to appreciate God for the privilege to be alive. Life is a gift. Life is what? It's a gift. People sleep and they don't wake up. And there's nothing they can do. You want to thank God. But you are alive this morning because God has kept you. And because he has something better for you this month, this year, you will not miss your blessing. Your amen is weak. For the past three days, we've been hearing some training, understanding on how we can build our family. And the first service this morning was very explosive. Can we appreciate Pastor Praise for a while? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful time. I'd like to share with us in this second service. And I'm going to be praying for different area of needs in this service. We're praying specifically for single. I'm going to be praying specifically for the married people. Everything that is good needs prayer. Amen. And things that are difficult also need prayer. I'll be sharing on what I title the wisdom you need to enjoy your relationship. Come say the wisdom I need to enjoy my relationship. That's what I'm sharing this morning in this second service. The wisdom you need to enjoy your relationship. It's important to know that life run on wisdom. Everything in life is run on wisdom. Solomon was a man in the Bible, one of the characters in the Bible, the son of David. When his father handed over the throne to him, he looked at the life of his father and he discovered, God has worked with my father, but if this man will apply a little wisdom, his life would have been better. And being his son, he went to mountain to pray. He went to Mount Gibeon to sacrifice. And the only thing he was asking for is wisdom and understanding to run his life. And God answered him and the wisdom of God was released unto him. In this service today, a lot of people are running their family. But there are wisdom that you need to enjoy that relationship. My talk this morning is going to be zeroing on both the single and the married. Because a lot of time when we teach on family we neglect some area of single and single people also need wisdom in fact if you don't marry right it's very difficult to manage marriage and that is why it's important i like to look, look, to look into the book of genesis this morning open your bible to book of genesis chapter 24 genesis 24 i like us to read from verse 14 genesis 24 i'm looking at verse 14 this is an account of why Isaac needed a wife. God, Abraham, made a covenant with his senior staff at home. The chief staff of 
Abraham is a man called Eliezer. He was sent to go and get a wife to to get a wife for Isaac. So this is what we see in Genesis 24 verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel whom I say, shall say, the damsel whom I shall say, let down the pitcher. I pray thee that you may drink, and he shall say, drink, and I will give thy come a drink also. Let the same be the she that shall be appointed, for thy servant is it thereby, shall I know that I will show you kindness unto my master. Verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah come out, who was born to Bethlehem, the son of Micah, the wife of Now, Abraham's brother with her picture and upon her shoulder. Verse 16. Let's look at verse 16. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man know her. And she went down to the well and filled her picture and came. Now this is an account of how Isaac got a wife. And it's important that when you want to get married as a single, you must marry right. Come and say marry right. Say let me hear you. If you are single, you need to marry right. You need to marry right. You must, you must get it ready to know that there are so many things to look at when you are single. You need to marry right. You know, there are different types of single in the world today, as I was sharing last Sunday. We have single and satisfied. Come and say single. Come and say satisfied. So there's a single, there are single that are but satisfied. They don't want to marry. They are single, but they are satisfied. They like their condition. Some of these single may be widower, may be widow. Some of these single are even people that are never married in their life. They feel like they don't want to marry. Some of them have taken an oath of celibacy and they are living their life. They feel they don't need a partner. So that's the category of single, single but satisfied. Apostle Paul was one of them. Apostle Paul never got married, or maybe, I mean, the story we know that he never get the never have a wife, and it was an eunuch. According to Matthew 19, verse 12, they say there are people that are eunuched for the kingdom. They are single, but they are not planning to get married. The second kind of single, are you with me this morning? Are they single but searching? Single and searching. These are people that are single, but they are searching. They are believing God that before the end of 2024, they will celebrate wedding. Am I right? Is it possible? So there are single that are searching. They are believing God that they want to marry a prayer partner, not a prayer point. Are you with me? Because when you marry wrong, you are going to marry, that person may marry a prayer point, not a prayer partner. Are you with me? You see, when you marry right, it means that God has helped you. It means God has helped you when you marry right. But when you don't marry right, ah, that is a problem. You, you, that person becomes a prayer point. Trouble upon trouble upon trouble. Nothing is as difficult as being in a wrong marriage. Amen? And you would think it's easy to remarry. Statistics shows that second, third marriages hardly succeed. It has shown. So it's very difficult to marry wrong. The third kind of single is single and sinning. This one is single, but they are they just they, they go from place to place. They are believers. They need deliverance. Are you with me? They are single but sinning. They are they will pick this person, drop them from place to place. They are not serious people. Single but sinning. If they are in this service or they are watching me online, God will deliver you. The fourth kind of single are single again. People that have lost their wife, lost their husband, and they believe that they can still remarry despite what they have been through. They can still get married. Single again. They want to marry again. It doesn't matter the age. We have a family friend that she and her husband divorced some years back. She was 52 at that time. But she remarried again. And she got married to a man that also looking for wife, praying for wife. God can do it again. So if you are single this morning, maybe you are a single mother, maybe you are divorced, maybe you, 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 you are a widow or you are a widower, God can still do it. You can still marry again. Come and say, I receive it. 
I speak over you today. God will answer your prayer. Your amen is weak. From the story we read this morning, we see a tip for singles. What are the things you need to look for when you want to get married to somebody? The Bible talk about damsel, Isaac, wife, Rebecca. The first thing that they say, the damsel was fair to look, which means it was good looking. Come and say good looking. Say, let me hear you. That person was, was good looking. So you must look at somebody that is good looking. The chemistry is there. You, you see that person and you say, wow, this person is good. And you see, what is good for me may not be good for you. Are you with me? They say beauty is the highest of what? Behold that. Some want them big, some want them small. Am I right? Are you with me? You know God created us differently because human beings are different. Praise God. Some people, what they like is not what you like. Praise God. So, years back, a young man came to see me. He's a member of my church back in Africa. And he said, Pastor, I want to bring my wife that I'm dating to you. This guy is about 6.1 feet. But when he, he came in, this lady is like 5.2. I said, this is a child abuse. <laughs> Praise God. The guy is tall, but the lady is very small. You can carry her. You can pick her like this. Carry go. I said, wow. Praise God. I said, why do you like her? I said, I just like her the way he, she is. I said, wow. Praise God. People like different things. Am I right? Some want them small. Some want them big. Any size God has given to you, somebody need you. Are you with me? Don't say I'm too big. Somebody wants it big. They don't want small. They don't handle anything small. Their own is must be what? It must be big. It must be fat and flourishing. Are you with me? Don't let anybody look down on you that you are too big. Somebody like you big. Are you with me? Come and say I'm the best. So let me hear you say I'm the best. Anybody bigger than you is too big. Anybody smaller than me is too small. Anybody taller than me is too tall. You are the right size. Tell everybody I'm the right size. So when everybody say lose weight, tell them that I want to right size. I'm not losing weight. Praise God. I'm right sizing. So it's important for you to know that good looking is one of it. Purpose driven. If you are looking for someone to marry, your purpose must align. Your purpose must what? You see, God sent you to this planet for a reason. And the person you are getting married to must be ready. Two of you must align. Very important. It's not everybody that can marry a pastor. Because to be a pastor's wife means you will allow every woman to be talking to your husband. Some women cannot handle it. If somebody else is talking to their husband, they will be doing like this. What is going on? Praise God. I know a pastor's wife. The husband happened to be my spiritual son. And every time somebody wants to talk to her husband, she wants to be there. Every time they want to talk to her husband, we are caught together. Talk to me too. So I call her, I say, Auntie, it doesn't work like that. He said, No, 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 but it's, 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 it's my husband. I said, You are too possessive. He said, I, I possess my possession. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> it's, it's an anointing to be able to marry a man that is a public man that everybody can talk to praise God you will discover in ministry people that talk to pastor more are the, are the women not men you know men are proud to talk to anybody average man don't want to talk to nobody most men don't go to see a doctor till they are dying have you discovered that most men when they are, thank God for Google that will show you the way. In the olden days, when men are tra traveling and they miss their way, and the wife says, let's say, I can figure it. Because something tells a man that I am a failure if I'm asking questions. Praise God. So, it's important to look at purpose. Come on, say purpose. So, if you want to marry somebody, the purpose of both of you must align. It's very important. 
the person must be have a sense of kindness. Come and say kindness. Not everybody is kind, but kindness is very important. If you study this Genesis 24, you will discover the dancer as, as much as he was feared to look upon. She was a kind woman. She was what? Because the prayer is that anybody that will come will be able to support me. That was a prayer. And she has that kindness. She was a very domesticated person. And these are some of those things that you must look for when you are getting married. I can sum up some of those things into what I call chemistry and compatibility. Come and say chemistry. Now, when you see someone and you are connected, that's chemistry. Chemistry is an outward thing God put in somebody that attracts other person. Are you with me? But chemistry is not enough to make marriage work. There will be compatibility. You will be compatible. You will be someone that something you can do things together. Amen. And you see people, have you heard people say, the moment I saw her, I was just shaking. That's chemistry. Those shaking won't make you get married forever. It's just an attraction. It's what? But attraction is not enough. Have you heard love at the first sight before? Love at what? As I see her. Wow. As I see him. No. You need that, but you don't only need that. You need chemistry and you need compatibility. You must be compatible. Because after some time, those feelings will go down. Those chemistry will turn to biology. Are you with me? Because after some time, the chemistry will not continue. So the physical attraction is important, but it's not enough. So chemistry is based on physical attraction. Okay, thank you for showing this. So chemistry plus, can you make it bigger? Okay, chemistry is equal to what? Attraction. When there is a chemistry and there is a compatibility, there will be friendship. You will be able to make friends together. Now, there are people that get married to people based on chemistry. At the end of the day, that marriage will not last. I have met people that from the honeymoon, they were planning divorce. From the what? Honeymoon. Because all the chemistry disappeared. And that's why you must be compatible. You must be compatible. It's very important to be compatible. Chemistry plus compatibility is called a good marriage. Chemistry, my love, compatibility is fatal attraction. It's just an attraction. Those things will wear out with time. Are you with me? Those things will wear out with time. The looks cannot hold marriage forever. But you need the looks. Especially men. Men are moved by what they see. The Bible said in 1 Samuel 16, 7, men look at what? At what? What? Appearance. But that you must be compatible. To be compatible means there are some interests that you share together. There are things you can do together. Your values must align. Your value must what? Your value must align. What you are sent to do, there are things that make both of you to flow. Now, when there is a compatibility, there is no chemistry, You'll be put on friend zone. They will put you as easy. We can talk. We can relate. But I just don't feel her. Have you heard things like that? I just don't feel him. You 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 feel like there are things you can do together. You share common things. You have interests, but something is not right. So you need both the chemistry, and you need to be compatible. Come and say chemistry. Come and say compatibility. You must be compatible. There are things that you must be able to do together. Maybe there are certain things. Maybe you are in the same industry. Maybe you do some things together. All those things are very, very important in relationship. Especially for single. When you, are, when you meet somebody for the first time, there will be something that is called chemistry. But you must also sit down and be able to know who is this person. Praise God. Because I've, I've heard ladies said, I want a guy that is tall, dark, and handsome. That's fine. But that's not enough. Because tall and dark and handsome will not raise a child. Are you with me? That will not pay bills. He will not be able to lead you in life. Praise God. He will be able to manage emotion. So you need both to be in that relationship. 
Praise God. Now, marriages have been succeeded without even chemistry. In the olden days, women don't even know whom to marry. They were arranged. I think the India has that culture. Am I right? If you are from India, you know what I'm talking about. They have a culture where the family arrange who you marry. And with time, you will like the person. Praise God. It's a matter of time. Amen. I asked my dad and my mom when they got married. My dad used to be a businessman in Ghana. And when it was time for him to get married, somebody saw my mother and said, Ah, we've seen one lady. It's going to be fine for you. And that's how they, he traveled back home and they brought ah, And that's how they got married. I, I asked my mom, how do you like him? Well, you have never told dates. He said, in the olden days, there's nothing like that. Praise God. Can that happen here? Nowadays, the young people will tell you, we need to talk for some time. I need to know whether it's flowing. Am I right? <laughs> Praise God. Even for talking for some time, divorce rate is high. Am I right? Divorce rate is high. So it's important to know all those things. You don't just get married to somebody. You need to know the person. You need to be compatible. You need to have an interest that will hold it together. Praise God. You know, the way it works like if I see a beautiful car outside, maybe Lexus 2025, I say, wow, this Lexus 570 2025. I just see the car, so I say, wow, I like this car. As I enter the car, I put on the engine. As I want to move, the car was not going. The car is fine, but it cannot serve me. It cannot take me to where I'm going. The car is useless, am I right? That's exactly what chemistry and to be compatible means. Very important to look at that. There are four things to avoid when you are dating. One, don't perform wife and husband duty before the time. Are you with me? What are the husband duty? Wife, husband and wife duty to sleep over. In this generation, we hear that people sleep over. Am I right? They cook. They do laundry. That's drunk if you are dating. You don't have to do that. Praise God. Because by the time the man is enjoying the wife opportunity, it might not go forward. The way men are wired. Praise God. Are you with me? In our time, when you want to get married, you are, you are praying for that first night you are going to sleep together. But nowadays, ah, oh, they have finished it all before the day. Praise God. You just become a testing kid. Testing officer. They will be testing you and testing you. So avoid, the, during the dating, avoid performing wife and husband duty before the time. You are not supposed to be cooking for anybody because you are not a cook. You are not supposed to be sleeping over. Can I come for a weekend and sleep over? Praise God. In the Christendom, that is not allowed. If you are a Bible believer, that is not what? It's not allowed. I've said my own, you can do your own. Are you with me? I have said my own, you can do what you like. Praise God. But the Bible does not allow it. Praise God. The Bible says bed is undefiled. You wait until the right time. Come to the right time. Pastor, you tell me that in this nowadays you can date someone and you don't do that thing. It is possible. It is what? Let me tell you, say it is possible. They will tell you, I want to test what I want to use. It's not every car you go and buy the test to. Some they just tell you this is a car. Yes, you can't test it. Praise God. Are you with me? It's silent now. What I'm saying is not popular. How can that happen? It's not easy. It's easy. Praise God. God has given us grace that will be easy. Number two, 
Keep building capacity. Four things to avoid to do when you are dating. Keep building capacity. Keep building what? There must be something both of you can offer each other. Build your capacity. Be better in anything you do. Amen. Show your value at all times by establish the boundaries. Show your value. This is what I can do. But there is a boundaries until you are sure. Until you are what? Until you are sure. And when you are dating, begin to look for red flags. And say, Dick, can this work? You are dating someone, took you to a restaurant. The way you talk to the waiter. You come here. Yeah. You know that. Uh -huh. That's a red flag. Are you with me? That's what? A red flag. If you know a lot of women that have been beaten in marriage, you'll be shocked. You'll be what? You'll be shocked. But you, there are red flags even when you are dating. You'll be seeing those things. But emotion will not allow you to listen. You'll even be making excuse for him. He's just a nice man, but sometimes he gets angry. Have you heard things like that before? The guy is nice. You don't know him. He's very nice. But sometimes he gets angry. Praise God. I've been involved in a couple. Anytime the man is angry, he will go and bring gun to threaten the wife. This happened in Africa, not in America. It happened where? Africa, not even in America. I will say, but you know there is nothing inside the gun. <laughs> The family have to take the lady out of the place. And after six months, she came to see me and said, Pastor, I know you are the only one that can talk to my family. I want to go back to him. I love him. He's a nice man. Praise God. Praise God. Begin to look for red flag when you are dating. What are the things that will threaten this journey? Because it's a journey of many years. Praise God. It's a journey. You need to look at some of those things. Amen. I know marriages that are packed up because the lady cannot do anything. It's not domesticated. It, 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 I mean, I'm telling you 15, 20 years ago, not even now. Praise God. She can do anything. She doesn't like Cookies, you want to eat out every time. If couple eat out every day, would they have money? Huh? The first thing about those food is that those food are commercial food. They are what? They are, they are to make profits. The guy told me, he said, Pastor, we have to divorce. I said, Why? He said, Imagine I'm the man, I'm not the one that will cook and cook. And my wife doesn't really walk. Praise God. She doesn't like walking. She doesn't like cleaning. She just likes to do her fingernail and look good. You see, the hand is just like this. There are many things to check. Praise God. Are you with me? If you are still hearing me, shout hallelujah. So single, you need to know that when you are dating people, there are things to look for. Courtship is a time. I mean, there are process of relationship. You can start as a friend, then you move into relationship, then you move into courtship. So there are so many aspects to check as you are moving that journey. People are always a product of the way they were raised. But you can decide and allow the word of God to raise you. I pray for every single here. Before this time next year, God will have said to you, yeah. your amen is weak. Yeah. Your amen is weak. Yeah. One of the things I've seen in a the, in the few years among the single, you see a lot of ladies that are sponsoring men. 
They sponsor the man, they pay for the bill, they pay everything, even while they are dating. But I always see that it doesn't really work well. Praise God. One of my lady in church, we're just dating this guy, and the guy said, well, um, I have uh, something to clear in the pot. Can you raise me with 500,000? Can you raise me with it? 550, 50, and one day she came was crying. She said, I spend a lot for this guy. I said, hey, even me and your pastor, have you spent for me? I don't know if you spend money like that for a man. You are buying love. It doesn't really work. Praise God. So we need to be careful and look at some of the red flag in that relationship before you go forward. Let's see, let me say a few things about the couples, married people. Praise God. Because the time is moving so that we can pray. Yesterday I was sharing three essential skills for couples. Let me, let me expand shit on that one. The first skill for every couple to use the adaptation skill. What, what I call it? You will be able to adapt when you get married. You're going to be able to adapt in your mindset the way you see things. People are raised differently. And that's why you need to be able to adapt to the new relationship you are finding yourself. It's very, very important. You must adapt to your mindset. I know a couple years back when they were about to get married, the lady said she wants five children. She wants how many? Because she's the only child of her parents. So she wants five children. But the guy came from a family where they have, the father is a polygamist and they had 22 children. So the guy wants only one or two. Different mindset. Am I right? Different mindset. So, adaptation has to come. Praise God. Very, very important. So there are a lot of places to adapt. Mindset has to change. The way you are raised may be different from the way the person you are getting married is raised. So there may be a place to adapt to each other. It's very, very important. Sometimes food you are used to is different from each other. You have to adapt. Adaptation is a skill every couple must look for. You are married somebody, you are getting to know each other, you need to adapt to so many things so that the marriage will work. Your plan must adapt. Marriage sometimes can lead to relocation to another place. Am I right? And you have to adapt if that's what works. You can adapt in the area of the church you attend. All those things are very, very important. So adaptation is number one thing that's very important. Behavior must adapt. You must adapt to your behavior. Some have the time they sleep. So you have to adapt to each other so that you can run together. I was sharing my experience. When I got married, my wife came from a family where they sleep 9 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. They are on the bed already. And by 5 a.m. they are out. But I came from a family. My father happened to be a pastor. Even when we sleep, we must wake up in the midnight to do vigil every day. Maybe that's, maybe that's an abuse now, Abby. Are you with me? That's an abuse on our time, but that's the way we are raised. So we are so used to not sleeping until 1 a.m. All my siblings. So when we got married by 8 a.m., 8 p.m., my wife would say, it's time for us to go and sleep. I say, sleep where? Money just come now. We are just, life has just started. Praise God. But with time, we have to be adapting. So many things. Food. So many things. Prayer style. I was raised in a church where we have to pray and shout. Amen. I remember when I went to Bible school some years back. I wanted to pray in the, in the, in the hostel and I need that and I started praying, shouting. They just wrote my name and took me to disciplinary committee. And I said, you are making noise when you are praying to disturb people that are sleeping around. I said, but I'm praying to God. He said, no. Prayer style. So people came from where they just pray like this. You won't hear what they are saying. Am I right? So people... So you have to adapt. There are so many areas of adaptation when you get married. You must adapt in your behavior. You know, when we enter a new country, you adapt to what they do there. Am I right? 
Praise God. If you are from Africa, where I come from, we don't have winter. We only have hot season and wet season. Praise God. During the wet season, there is rainfall. Am I right? But here there is winter, summer, fall, I mean, spring. So you have to adapt. Praise God. If you don't adapt, cold will deal with you. Am I right? So adaptation can happen. So when we get to a new nation, we adapt. New organization, we adapt. So marriage is area you have to adapt. Some men are romantic than their wife. Yes. Some men like to hold you. They are huggers. They are what? That's what they call them. They, all, they like hugging. They say, why you want to me? Leave me. Ah, what's, what's this? I've seen couples like that. The guy say, pastor, my husband, my wife doesn't like me. I like hugging, you know. You know, there are children that when they are raising them until they rock there, they don't sleep. Have you noticed that? These are ogres. They like to be hugged. Some don't like, don't touch me. I'm my own. I'm fine. You have to adapt. You have to do what? You have to do what? I've seen the lady that complained that my husband likes sex too much. I said, well, you have to adapt. You have to what? Because there are two kinds of sex. There are beautiful sex and there are dutiful sex. Come and say beautiful. Come and say dutiful. So dutiful means you don't really want it that time, but duty say you must do it. You go to work in the, on Monday morning, you don't love it, but you have to what? Dutiful. Beautiful. Praise God. So one of the adaptations in marriage is beautiful and dutiful sex. Praise God. Average man want more sex than the wife. Is that correct? Huh? Average. I'm not saying all. Praise God. God, there is an hormone, a chemical that flow in a man's body that make them have want it more. So a woman must learn that. I say, now that you are married, you have to adjust. You have to do what? You have to adjust. Praise God. And that's why it's important for couples to attend classes. Amen. To know all these things. Because a lot of marriages have been broken because of what I'm sharing right now. Amen. You know, one lady was asking how could a man go and sleep with somebody else and he will tell you, I love you. I still love you. And I explained to her, he loves you, but you want to meet that need somewhere because somebody at home cannot meet that need. It's important women understand how this thing works. Praise God. Are you hearing me? Am I making sense? Huh? But I also see women that want more sex than their husband. Yes. It's a gray area, but I will say it. I say it. Praise God. I have a couple some years back, my church many years ago. We were in my house that day, and the lady said, Pastor, is an opportunity to talk to my husband. He doesn't sleep with me as much as I want. The man said, ah! I said, why, why are you closing your eyes? Praise God. And I said, Mr. Man, what really happened? He said, Pastor, you know, I don't really feel to have sex every time. Dear, but I love you now. I used to hug you. Why do you want me to have sex with you every time? I said, what is every time? He said, Pastor, tell him, this man will, once in two months. I said, you are a murderer. <laughs> Praise God. So it's very important to understand how this thing works. Adaptation. Come on, say adaptation. Am I making any point here this morning? Is somebody learning something? You must learn to adapt. It's one of the ways 
relationship works in marriage. So if you are ready for marriage, ready to adapt. The second skill is communication. Come and say communication. It's important that couples learn how to communicate. Because the life wire of relationship is what? Communicate. You have to talk every time. You have to communicate. And you must learn how to communicate with your partner. It's very important. You must know how. And when you are communicating, you must give full attention. What do I say? You know, men are different from women in the area. A man can be doing something and you are talking and he's hearing and he's fine. But the woman wants you to look at her when you are talking. Are you with me? Have you noticed some men when they are talking to you? They say, D, you are not, you are not hearing me. Say, I, I hear. Some people will use here to hear. No, it's not. The, for a woman, you are, you have to. It's a, it's a, it's a fellowship. It's what? So, you have to learn those style of communication. You must give full attention. You must be making eye contact. Are you with me? And your statement must be seasoned. You don't just say anything. Every time you got married, you know that everything is we, not I. This is my house. This is our, our car, our everything. Everything is changing. A language has changed the moment you are married. Is somebody learning anything tonight, this morning? It's very important. The Bible says we should let our communication be seasoned with salt. Our word must say things that are nice. And when you are disagreeing as a couple, you may be disagreeing. When you are disagreeing, you allow that person to say, a mind who has a mind. Don't interrupt. Let us say a mind. Let him say his mind. Many couples cannot sit down and talk together for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. They will quarrel. I pray healing will take place in your home. Yeah. Your amen is weak. Yeah. It's very, very important to learn how to communicate in marriage. Very important. You must talk with respect to your partner at all time with honor with respect amen you see the value you place on people determine how you talk to them is that correct when you place value on your partner you talk to them with respect amen the third skill i mentioned yesterday was conflict resolution what i call it many couples run away from conflicts but as long as two people are staying together, there will be conflicts. Is that correct? Conflict is normal in marriage. In fact, when there is no conflict, there is, you don't know each other. You have to be able to know that conflict will come. We will misunderstand each other. We will argue. But you must make sure you are able to resolve your conflicts. Very important. You see a lot of people that have a bottled emotion for months, for days. And this thing will now blow one day. It's important when there is something, you must solve the problem. When there is something, you must discuss, you must share. Average man run away from, when the wife say, can we see? We need to talk. The man is, is, is afraid. It's important that you, you identify the core issue and you say it. Nobody is a mind reader. You must say what is happening. Praise God. I don't like what you have done. I don't think this is supposed to be. Praise God. Conflict will come in a relationship. It's normal. We're going to go through it. You're going to disagree with each other. In fact, one of the things in the courtship is that we, we should agree that we can disagree. We should agree that we can what? Without feeling anything. We should not feel like because... You disagree with me. Because you disagree with me, you don't love me anymore. I know you don't love me. That's why you disagree with me. We need to disagree to agree. Amen. Very, very important. Very, very important. Prince was sharing how he was in a board room with his wife and some other people. And when he raised a point, the wife disagreed. And she proved many men can handle that. You should back me up even when I'm making a mistake. Am I right? Have you heard this like that before? Even when we are in that meeting and I'm saying something that is wrong, you must, 
No, that's wrong. You have to get mature to a level that somebody can disagree with you and you can see smile. Praise God. I think for a lot of female folks, that's very difficult. Even that men. Praise God. I've been in a situation where the lady said, why should you be going against me in this meeting? But I said, but what she said is correct. He said, if it's correct, you should back me up for now. No. Conflict, you cannot run away from conflict. You can't run away from it. You have to know there will be conflict as long as you move. But you can explain and see the other people's point. Have you discovered some people don't want to listen to other people's side? They just want their own side. Praise God. I pray for your marriage. There will be healing. There will be deliverance. Every area of your marriage that you want God to intervene, God will intervene. Shall we rise up on our feet? Have you learned something today? Amen. Lift up your hands and just ask God what you desire your family this month. What you desire your family this year. Rebo Shade. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore Oh, come let us adore in Christ. Oh, come. Jesus, I want to pray for all the single that are in the house as you are running up this conference today. If you are single and you are believing God for God to set to you in 2024, whether you are dating right now but you are not yet married, you are single, you are believing God to set to that marital. I'd like you to raise your hands or find your way to the altar. I want to pray for you today. If you are single, you believe God for a miracle, please come to the altar. From the scripture we read this morning, we saw the account how Elisha prayed that God should connect, God should make it work. Relationship is by God. Thank you, Father. Oh God, oh God. your hands and say, Lord Jesus, connect me to my life partners. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, connect me this year. Let 2024 be my year. Connect me this year. Rebo Shadi. Rebo Shadi. Rebo Shadi. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, connect me. I speak grace over you. In Jesus' name we pray. Say a better amen. I speak over you today. The Lord will connect you. Favor to settle down is released. Favor to marry is released. Say, I receive favor from God for my marital destiny. Today, I shall be connected to my life partner. Every hindrance on my way is clearing away 
the Lord will connect me to my life partner. I shall be connected. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, pray. Say a better amen. You can go back to your seat. I want to pray for people who need the touch of God on their marriage, on their relationship. It means that there are things in your marriage you want God to fix. There are things in your marriage you want God to fix. And God can fix it. He can put joy in that home. He can send a new wine. So if you're on this service today and you're on this altar, you can find your way to the altar. If you need the touch of God on your marriage, please come. Please come. You want the touch of God on your marriage, please come. You have a need, you want God to interview, please come. Thank you. Thank you. Say after me, say, Holy Spirit, I hand over my home, my marriage into your hands. Take over every good thing I desire in this marriage. I receive in the presence of God, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Say better, amen. I speak that your marriage will receive joy. Your marriage will receive favor, provision, promotion. Thank you, Father. Every blessing that makes marriage good is transferred. Receive it now. Thank you, Father. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Shall we be seated? How many of you are blessed by this conference this year? And I believe God will give us testimony in the name of Jesus. I want to give our friend the service this morning. I want to give an offering today. You may want to give your offering by cash. An envelope is being passed across. You want to do a transfer. You can do anyone want to pay your tithe, want to give your offerings. This church believe in payment of tithe. We believe every time God blesses us, we give our 10% to support the kingdom. And every time we show up before the Lord, we don't come empty handed. I like to pray for every tithe and the service this morning. And I want to pray for people that are giving their offering. I speak grace over your life. Things will be easy for you. Your doors are open. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are one of people that give to the building fund also, I want to pray for them. The rock fund. I want to pray for you. I speak over everyone giving to the building. God will build house for you. As you support this house, the Lord will support your project. Your business will rise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. also our communion Sunday. I speak over the communion this morning. Bring, bring, it, bring one. One of the signs, one, one of the most powerful covenants in the, in the world today is the blood covenant. Is what? So every time we take this, it's a representation of the blood of Jesus. Come and say the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, whosoever drink have life in me. May the life of God enter you. Which means sickness will not have a way in your life. By this communion, you are healed. 
you are delivered. You will enjoy great fellowship with Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You can take the communion. If you need it, just wave your hands. They will give you one. Okay, somebody's raising hands. Can you take the communion here? Somebody's raising hands. Just raise your hands until they get to you. Yeah. This rose. Take the communion, lay hand in your stomach and begin to speak for healing and deliverance in your system. No sickness will develop in my body. Any form of attack is over. God is healing me this morning. Rebo Shade. Yabababake Sade. Rebo Shade. I speak grace. Rebo Shade. Bira Baba Sinda. Rebo Shade. Oh, thank you, Father. Rebo Shade. Oh, Rabba Wasinda. Oh, Rabba Shinda Kaye. Thank you, Father. Can you do that worship a bit? Somebody in this service. There's somebody in this service. Listen to this. You are in a school. You are doing a course. You are doing some classes. But they look at there as a spiritual attack that doesn't want you to finish that course. I speak by this communion that you will finish. The anointing of a finisher is coming on you. You will finish. If you know you are the one I'm talking about, come, come to this altar. Let me hold your hands. Come. Come. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. You are doing a course. Say after me, say by this communion, any covenant in dream my finishing in this course is broken today. I receive the anointing of a finisher. Every good thing I lay my hands upon, I will finish, I will graduate in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Say a better amen. amen. Go back. You are blessed. You're all I want. Thank you. Hello everyone, we extend a warm welcome to all our first timers. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us today. Here are a few upcoming events that you definitely don't want to miss out on. We have our HTC NJ Youth Worship and Prayer 
on April 13th at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. The venue is Junior Auditorium, calling all youth in the church. Join us for an inspiring time of worship and prayer, centered around the theme, Igniting Fire for Power, Ephesians 5.14. Experience the presence of God and ignite your spiritual journey. Attention all men, mark your calendars for a special retreat designed to empower and equip you for life's challenges. Prepare for a transformative experience as we delve into topics relevant to men's lives. We have the men's retreat coming up on April 19th to the 20th. All ladies, please join us for a transformative experience at Emergence 2024. Engage in insightful panel discussions on women's specific topics, indulge in barbecue delights, relax with rejuvenating messages, and unleash your creativity at our Seed and Paint session. Don't miss out in this empowering event. Don't forget to follow us on social media for the latest updates and make sure to subscribe to our channels for exclusive content and updates. Thank you for joining us today. Whether you're here in person or watching from home, we are grateful for your presence. Let's continue to grow together in faith and community. Until next time, my name is Nemeth. Have a blessed day a wonderful weekend and we look forward to seeing you at these exciting events. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. What an amazing service, right? Put your hands together for the Lord. Our God is worthy. If you're here today. It's your first time worshiping with us. You're with us in person. You're streaming online. We would like to get to know you. We're so blessed that you're here. So if it's your first time here, can you just wave your hand, please? You're online, oh wow, we're so blessed, we're so blessed. We're so blessed, if you're sitting around them, come on, make them feel welcome. Can you just wave your hand one more time, one more time, one more time, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You're streaming online, please put in the chat box, it's my first time here, and one of our online ministers will connect with you so that we can tell you more about us as a church and to get to know you better as well. We're the Holy Ghost Christian Center, a place of refuge, a house where you come in and you just fall deeper in love with Jesus and you find purpose in kingdom for the glory of the Most High God. We know that because you've come today, you'll be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we just appreciate them one more time? God bless you, God bless you. The Lord honor you, thank you so much. Please, 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 we're about to close and go home. Just a few reminders for those of us that are participating in the Rock Fund. So if you don't know what the Rock Fund is, it's a building project fund to pay off the mortgage of the building. So some of us committed to it. You weren't aware previously. Now you're hearing about it. You're interested. Please just wave your hands. One of the ushers will connect with you. Or you can scroll or you can scan the QR code on the screen to get more information and become a part of it. But for all of us that are already a part, or if you're even joining today, that's fine as well. Come this Saturday, April 13th at 7.30 p.m., we will be meeting online via Zoom with our pastor. And we'll be using the prayer line conference, our prayer line that we run every 6.30 a.m. That's the same information we'll be using. So if the media will please put it on the screen, that would be awesome for us all to just come together and pray together and strengthen each other. And as you build God's house, the Lord will build your house in the name of Jesus. And please mark your calendar. If you're part of the Rock Fund, yes, we're meeting this Saturday for the first meet, meet and prayer time, but we will make it a consistent, you know, a, a periodic thing that we do every second Saturday of every month at the same time via the same platform and the Lord will honor you in the name of Jesus. Our women, are you excited? Come on. May 17th to the 19th is our time. We start on a Friday. It will be amazing, amazing, amazing. We're going to have healthy conversations, time of impact and prayer, just times of impartation. Allow the Holy Spirit to just rest upon us. The Saturday will be amazing. We'll have fun activities here, sip and paint, massages, chair massages. Men, don't be jealous. Chair massages. But don't worry, guys. You're invited to the barbecue so you can help us work the group. Real. Well, you guys are invited to the barbecue on Saturday. And then on Sunday will be amazing, 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 amazing. So our women, please remember, right after service, we're waiting behind to begin our practice, right? Our rehearsal. 
so we can bless the church with the gifts that the Lord has given unto us. So men, brace yourselves. You're going to be shocked. You'll be shocked, shocked, shocked and highly blessed in the name of Jesus. All right, let's rise up on our feet. We're going to say our ACC expression and then we'll share the grace. But before we do the expression, can you find two people you don't know? Ask them, what's your name? Identify a color that they are wearing and ask, what is, do you particularly like this color? Or is it a, just a coincidence? You know, just something, notice something about them. It could be the shade of their lipstick. It could be their blouse, their shoe, their shirt, their, whatever it is. And just inquire, I like this color. What is it about this color that draws you in? Very good. I see some people are not moving. There's going to be an exam when we're done. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You know, give me a moment, please. You know, Gio said something, I think it was last Sunday, or maybe it was during Ignite this past, or this weekend. Maybe it was during Ignite. I don't remember when exactly. But he said that for so many years, he would get on the airplane, and he would just be on the plane quiet, minding his own business, until he gets to his destination. And if you take plane rides, especially if you're going from one country to the next, it's a long ride. He said, but after a while, he decided, like, you know what, why am I on the plane, and I'm not talking to anybody? And one day, he met someone on the plane that was sitting close by him, only to realize that that person was the owner of a property that he needed back in Africa. And just from conversation, they was like, consider it done. When you get home, just send a letter to my office and I'll take care of it. I say that to say sometimes in church, your helper is sitting right next to you. So when we say, say hello, it's not just to pass time. You never know. God works in miraculous ways and plants people in different places. Praise the Lord. Are you ready this week to go take your week with excellence and do great and mighty things? All right, let's do our expression. HCC is a church striving for perfection. We will do our part to promote a culture of God's love because we are visionaries who are audacious yet loving understanding and approachable we are balanced individuals who lead our world with excellence you will lead your world and you will do it with excellence in the name of jesus and may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing week. Our women, please, let's stay back really quickly, 15, 20 minutes, and we're out of here. Please, please, please. You ready for us? <laughs>